Right. Hello, everyone. Um, this is our presentation. Our brand name is Phoenix and Co. Shoe Manufacturers. And the people who have contributed were brand name Robert Villa Gomez, Hector Uteras, and Luis Piega. So Phoenix meaning, the meaning of our brand is to step into a new beginning with every pair for our beloved shoe customers. Um, so our mission statement at Phoenix Shoes is our shoe company's mission is to provide our customers with exceptional footwear through continuous innovation, prioritize customer satisfaction, and approach our work with humility to maintain our success. So our first initial strategy when we first began the simulation was to offer high quality shoes with high prices. Our price point um, ranged from 70 to 120 per pair. And we decided to make it an equivalent to Vans and Nike. We also invested in a lot of new equipment and old equipment. And we made a bid on a celebrity, Kimmy Jimmo, in order to try to enhance our um to enhance our celebrities and just get more marketing and we did not offer free shipping and we spent the market average on marketing so we didn't really invest a lot in shipping instead we invested more in celebrities we soon realized that our first strategy was not profiting a lot we were not shipping out a lot of shoes and it had to do with the price so the first step was lowering the price to the sh of the shoes from 40 to $50 range. And then our second step was offering free, sh free shipping to all countries. And then our third step was to sell the production facilities that we had in North America because we paid more in tariffs and then open up more markets in Latin America and Asia because they offered lower tariffs. And then our fourth step was to significantly increase marketing in each country, which increased our sales overall. These were our biggest successes. Um, we managed to lower the price of the food from $40 to $50 a pair, and that helped us attract more price-sensitive customers who may have previously found their shoes too expensive. And then we managed to offer free shipping to all countries, and that reduced barriers to purchasing the shoes, particularly for customers in countries with high shipping costs. And lastly, we reduce production costs, which allow the company to lower prices and increase profits. Oh, can you other slide? Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, I don't know what's going on. Sorry, guys. Mm -hmm. No, you're fine. So the map. Oh. Just talk about it if it's not like if okay, I don't know if it's gonna let you. My apologies, we're having some technical difficulties. Okay. So what's on the previous slide is just basically an overview. Um, I titled it Phoenix versus the world because it's just about how we did in each region. So after the last year, which I believe this is, um, we ended in year 20, um, the results are that we, um, in terms of like our EPS and how much we're profiting. So in the regions of Asia and Latin America, Latin America, we're in the positive range and Asia doing the best at 2.93. Latin America being 2.09, Europe and Africa being our third highest, but we're in the, the negative there at negative 7.65. And then as previously mentioned, Brenda, um, because of tariffs and because it was harder to sell in North America, we ended up negative 18.70. But like I said, um, and as I'll mention in the next slides, we've come a long way to how we first started um, and we're able to end positive in two out of the four regions. So if we go to the slide that we're currently on, um, like I was touching upon, it was just harder. Um, I think as we got more into the simulation that we had to realize like each region is so different in terms of tariffs, how much everything's going to cost, what the trends of 
you know, if we got a celebrity, if it was going to work in that country or what was going to be the different aspects to um, sell and to get rid of our inventory. Next slide. Uh, right there. So our strategy was effective, especially towards the end in weeks 18 to, through 20, as we look at the chart, because like I said, we started off and then we just kind of declined and we kept declining. But then from year 18 to 20, we kind of leveled off. And what we saw was if we cleared our inventory, um, clearanced out our products slash lower the prices, limited our production in certain regions, because that's a big thing that, um, that would happen that we would have so much like say in like um in North America and we basically it was hard to get rid of that x amount of shoe and then to like also send them out um we also assessed what was important for our company like like I said if we clear in something out if we did more advertising if we sold more in bulk and then looking at our current trend of the competitors so a big thing that we also did is that we learned um, by looking to see what everybody else was pricing their stuff out, what everybody else was doing, if people were clearancing stuff out and what was going to be best. So like, so that we, instead of declining, we at least could level off or even go higher than we were at. So yes, we still finished in last place, but thankfully we were able to look at these aspects and be able to be in a better position than we originally went, that we were originally in, because like I said, we started off and then we just kept on going down, but we were able to catch ourselves and just at least like be consistent and not keep on going negative. Next slide. Okay, I think for us, our greatest challenge, like I said, was clearing out our inventory, especially in countries like Europe, Africa and North America, just because it's there, like Brenda said, it was tariffs and then People weren't buying as much like in Asia and um, Latin America. So I think it was just about how are we supposed to get rid of those and also ship them out? Because, yeah, maybe we had them like bought, but it was like that we weren't able to ship them out. Um, and then also, like was mentioned before, finding a balance between the number of pair and quality, because before we price a little bit higher, and the quality was there, but just no one was buying it. And we were, we just had so much of that inventory. And that's kind of, I think, where we messed up in a sense that we just had so much stock and we weren't selling anything. Um, and then basically we, towards the end, we figured out how much advertising we would need through each region, depending on how much of the demand was. Next slide. All right, this slide is titled Lesson Learned, and we learned, uh, well, I wrote down three lessons. The first being a company must balance quality and interaction with sales and marketing efforts to achieve sustainable growth. And this is as we talked about previously in this lecture or in the slides that we basically change our, the funds that we put into marketing to sell more shoes. Uh, and then for my second one, I wrote a focus on product development and love your key success. As competition and changing market conditions can quickly make a product obsolete. And this also goes to the same thing because we had a lot of shoes and we weren't selling them at first because we didn't put enough money into marketing. And as we did, you know, our sales went up. So that was good for us. And we learned that lesson. And for the last lesson that we learned, we learned that it's important to continually refine a company's approach to ensure it aligns with current market conditions and customer demand. And this also goes to the same thing, basically. Like, that was our main mistake that we made as a team. But as we went along, we tried to correct it. Like, as we talked about, we tried to get a celebrity sponsor. And we added more money into marketing. And that really helped us. All right. So if we were to do it again, um, probably the first things we would not do would be taking out a loan the first year that we were um, assigned this uh, um, simulation. It really put us into debt. and it put us in like in a hard position uh, for the remaining of the simulation. Uh, we would, would keep a better allocation of our inventory. So getting rid of our inventory, um, keeping up on more on that. And I feel we would do more business in Asia and Latin America since they were the most profitable. They were our top two profitable, uh, Asia being the first and Latin America being the second. Uh, and then we would also probably keep, we would 
if we do it again, we would keep our shoes um, at a lower price and gradually increase it, um, you know, to average out with the total market instead of um, starting off high and then bringing them down low. And we would also um, buy less equipment and only buy what we needed. Um, so we would be able to control um, all of our inventory and all of our, uh, our warehouses. So the quote that we chose to represent um, our group is by Helen Keller, where she states, alone, we can only do so little and together we can do so much. So I feel like this quote um, accurately represents our group because in the beginning, we were having some trouble with scheduling and meeting. And I feel like that really reflected our work because um, without having everyone there, it was hard to make decisions. But I feel like towards the end, when we all started brainstorming and, and we all started meeting, um, it reflected in our work because we got our numbers up and we got different opinions from our different group mates on what we should do to improve. So I feel like um, this accurately reflects um, our team and I feel like we did so much better together. And this is our logo. Uh, we made a logo with a, with a phoenix on the side. Um, so we can put like on our shoes or if we want to uh, put it on apps eventually, um, stuff like that. And we, our name is Phoenix. Um, we came up with the word, uh, our brand name for Phoenix because uh, Phoenix as mythologically, um, they start from nothing and they turn into like this great bird. You know, they start from the uh, start of a new beginning. So I think that really fits well of, uh, of us as a group of, since you know we didn't do so well but we were starting to get better as time progressed so that's why we chose phoenix and why we choose a phoenix um, low, um, symbol for our brand so um just we're going to talk about some five positive items that we felt throughout the ending of this project so the first would be changing strategy we truly believe that changing our strategy is acceptable. I feel like in the beginning, it was, we felt like we couldn't change it just because we thought like it would be hard to see growth after changing it and changing the prices would um, impact our strategy. But we felt that it's okay to change and try new things. So after we changed our strategy, we started seeing a lot of significant growth. And I feel like if um, the years went on and we kept on using our strategy, we would have definitely moved up in the scale. So this is why we feel positive about changing strategies. Um, and just to jump off what Brenda said, after we came together, um, we were able to do more, to do better because like I said, maybe in the beginning, because all of us weren't involved or like it was it would be hard for just one person to feel like wow how can I change this or maybe I shouldn't change this because if I change it I'm going to make it worse but then having that group and that kind of someone to bounce ideas off of or someone to have support it just made us better as a unit to progress forward and as well we learned to take losses we learned that you know it's okay to lose some because once you're at the bottom there's only one way to go is up. So that really helped us positively grow and to understand what do we need to do. So at least maybe we didn't get first place. Maybe we, you know, we ended up last, but at least we continued to do better than what we, we ended up better than how we were. We didn't end up declining. We ended up at least at a better place. Yeah, then I just want to, um, the one of the puzzles I, would seem what I would put our team meetings, you know, or once our team meetings came together, we, you know, our revenue went up and I, that show was very significant of how important it is to have team meetings, um, not just in school, but probably in, you know, just in school and uh, work in general. So it's always easier or easier for everyone when everyone gets involved. All right, and finally, we feel that we learned a lot and, you know, our first couple of weeks were rough, but as we went on, our overall performance increased significantly. As Hector was talking about, you know, might have not done so well, but at the end, we improved some of the work. So we feel like we're proud of that. All right, we're Team Phoenix, and this is our presentation. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.